about how this monument got here and who it who it's to, why it's here. The, all you have to do is read the monument. It says it on the monument. It says right on the front, to the Confederate dead. And it tells you who put it up, the UDC ladies. Uh, it is not to any Confederates who were living at the time in 1906. They are not glorifying what the university did, or excuse me, what the Confederacy did. They are not saying anything about slavery or why they fought or why they, they, they any other cause of the war. They don't get into that. If you send a boy to war, to the Civil War, and he dies, he gets killed, odds are he is buried somewhere out there on the battlefield. Uh, at Shallow, for example, there are five burial pits that the Confederates end up in. The biggest one are seven deep and over 700 Confederates. If you send a boy to war and he gets killed, you don't get a body back. You don't get what we would call now closure. You don't get your son back, your dad back, your cousin, your uncle, your brother. You don't get a body back. Uh, you also have a pretty darn good idea that, number one, he does not receive a decent burial. He's uh, either not buried at all, mm -hmm. he's partially buried, or he's thrown into a pit with hundreds of others. Like at Shallow. Like at Shallow. Uh, like we talked about dead chickens. Yeah. See, he's go through a chicken and, coop, and you and dig several, a hole and throw them in. That's all they could do after those battles. And several other battlefields across the country. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Most battlefields. You're right. Uh, on most battlefields, like, uh, again, I use a shallow an example, only 85 miles from here as a crow flies. 85 Ole Miss boys were up there uh, in that battle. And uh, we know that 13 died and eight were wounded up there, Ole Miss boys in 20 different units. We know that some of those Ole Miss boys have to be in those burial pits. Uh, it, it just makes sense that some of them were there. Uh, and those, their mothers, their daughters, their wives, their sisters all knew that their, their sons, their family members were not buried properly. So after the war, uh, they want to put monuments up, not just here in Lafayette County, but all over the South to the dead. They don't put it up to anything else. They are just remembering all those boys they didn't get back. The University Grays, one third of them are dead four years later. Uh, the class of 1861, out of those 28 kids, 30% of them are dead four years later. Uh, the student body here from 1860-61, the student body, the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and the law school boys, 27% of them after four years of war are dead. They don't come home. They're all buried in a prison camp, uh, on a battlefield somewhere, all over northern Virginia, into Maryland, into Pennsylvania, all over the west here. Completely unmarked. And shallow, raised. completely unmarked for the most part, lost and gone. Uh, after er most every major battle, you can find uh, newspaper accounts and letter and diary accounts of uh, dead bodies that get eaten by the crows, eaten by the vultures, eaten by the wild dogs, eaten by wild hogs. And these women here know that's what happened to their family member more than likely. So they want some kind of monument, some kind of remembrance, some kind of closure for their family members. So all over the South, they put monuments up uh, to remember those boys who didn't come home, who never received decent burials. They, so, they want something to remember them by. So in other words, the, 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 the opposition out here tries to spread lies saying that these statues were built to support white supremacy and support uh, the Confederacy, supporting slavery and everything. But you, you and me as well know very well that what these monuments stand for. I've done the research. I can read the monuments, number one, but I've gone back and I've looked at the newspaper accounts of the day. I've looked at the uh, magazine articles of the day. I've looked at the words of the ladies themselves who put these monuments up and they say, they tell you, we put them up to the dead. This one right here behind me on the uh, bottom of the circle here at the University of Mississippi, uh, was put up to honor the uh, Confederate dead of two cemeteries. The campus, the uh, cemetery campus, excuse me, let me start back, the Confederate cemetery here on campus that probably has over 700 dead boys. Some of these women who helped put this monument up helped to nurse those boys in 1862 and into 1863 and 64. They watched uh, a lot of those boys die. Uh, when those ladies get older, when financially they can, uh, they want to remember those boys, uh, the boys who died here on campus as strangers who they never knew until they showed up here, but they helped take care of. And to it's also dedicated to the dead in St. the Confederate dead in St. Peter's Cemetery here in Oxford, Mississippi. This was a compromised location 
uh, to put this monument up. Instead of putting this one up on the uh, campus, uh, excuse me, on the courthouse lawn, they brought this one out here to the campus because they had 700 plus dead, Confederate dead here on the campus. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had probably wartime dead in St. Peter's, probably no more than 15 or 20, uh, maybe not even that many, but they had men who died from the end of the war to 1906 and 07. Uh, that they were remembering also, Confederate dead who died after the war and, and were buried. Now the Confederate veterans. United Daughters of the Confederacy are the ones that erected this monument, correct? The United Daughters Confederacy put this monument up, yes, and put the one up, uh, helped put the one up on the square along with United Confederate veterans and along with the sons of Confederate veterans there uh, on the courthouse lawn. Now, uh, how long have you been studying the city of Oxford and the University of uh, University of Grays? I, I, and I've worked on everything to do with Ole Miss and Oxford uh, concerning the Civil War for 28 years now. Started out to do a book on the University of Grays. It's grown into a book on the class of 61 also, most of whom are not Grays. The Jeremiah Gage letters, one University Gray in detail. We've got 80 of his letters. I'll do a book, good Lord willing, on the uh, town and the university during the war. The town is burned in 1864. The university is a, a hospital after, before and after the Battle of Shiloh and through three years of war with over 4,000 young men passing through this university. Uh, I've gotten sucked into anything and everything to do with uh, the university in the war and her alumni and students in the war and Oxford in the war. Now you give tours of Oxford and the university all the time. Now, you want to promote your, your, your Facebook sure, page? Sure, I, I'm Stark Miller. I give uh, Civil War tours of Oxford and the university, give half day tours for four hours, give all day tours for eight hours. I give private tours. I give announced tours in the spring and the fall, uh, during uh, uh, the fall and the winter, any time during the year. You want to call me up, I'll take you on your own private tour uh, for a day rate charge. I uh, also give tours of Shallow, and I do a little different at Shallow. I have 85 Ole Miss boys in 20 different units up there. The University Grays are not at Shallow. They are sent to the east, so the Grays don't fight at Shallow, but there are 85 University boys who do end up there in 20 different units, and I do give that tour, and we cover the whole battlefield, but we cover those 85 Ole Miss boys and what they do at Shallow. Uh, I also give tours of Holly Springs, Mississippi, Civil War tours there. We cover the uh, town and the cemetery and also talk about almost a third of that time we talk about the yellow fever epidemic of 1878. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so with all the light of what's going on on the university right now and all the uh, whitewashing of the traditions at the university, what's your opinion about that and uh, what do you want to see in the future? I've worked so hard and so long to find the truth on all this material. People uh, argue about this for the last 40 years and most people have no idea what the true facts are. Most people have no idea why this monument is here and who put it up or the one on the uh, courthouse lawn, why it's there and who put it up. Uh, when you dig down and find the truth, uh, it is much better than all the myths and legends that have grown up. Good Lord willing, I'll get several books written. I've moved here to Oxford to do that, to do the actual writing of the books that I've been researching for so long now. Uh, and I just need to get a lot of books written and get the truth out as I've found it. And we'll be looking forward to those books. Mr. Miller, I appreciate you showing me around today. Thank you, George. All right.